there is a good deal of weight to this. That front bogey being centrally sprung, just like the uh, prototype, does mean that it goes through the corners with an immense amount of grace. Hi there to you, I'm Jenny Kirk, welcoming you back to the channel up here in the loft on Weir Yard. And today, I'm really, really grateful to KR Models, who've loaned me one of their new GT3 models with the full sound package. Now, this is something that I've, uh, I've been watching with interest as the model has developed, and it's finally reached the market. It is available to purchase through their website, and we're going to have a link in the description box down below for that. But I'm going to be putting this model through its paces in association with today's sponsor, Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories. So come with me, I'm really excited to put this model through its paces. to thank uh, KR Models for sending over the GT3 for review. Now I've got it here in the box and the box itself features the line artwork of the locomotive and uh, also just there the end of the tender is what that is. And um, just looking here it's interesting it says um, KR Models Edmonton Canada. I didn't realize they were based in Canada. We've also got there the uh, label for the model number. It's a GT3 OO gauge DCC sound. Uh, the label's actually cut off the uh, actual model number, so I'm not quite sure which one this is. But uh, certainly, I know that uh, some people do poke fun, but I'm always really impressed by models where they come in a really substantial box. You know, Sam has his buffers, I have my boxes, and I think that the actual uh, robustness of the box is a big statement about uh, the quality of the product within. But I'm going to just uh, let's just try and slide this out and it does actually come out pretty easily and one of the first things there that's just sort of come out is this and I was quite interested to see this um, you'd be hard pressed to miss it. It says stop and uh, no it doesn't say hammer time on the other side but it says read this before you use your model and this is to do with the coupling between the tender and the locomotive itself. And it's really important because if you do anything wrong, it is possible to damage these things. So you do want to be a little bit careful. In here as well, we've got uh, a little bit of information about the GT3, uh, English Electric's Brave Experiment. And these were really very much a locomotive of their time with the experimentation for modernization of traction post Second World War. And this was built as a demonstrator at the Vulcan Foundry by English Electric. And you can see in its design that it owes a lot to steam locomotive construction and styling. Uh, essentially, it was um, a pretty much a, a, a 460 steam locomotive chassis, pretty similar to a BR standard 5MT. And the tender that it pulled obviously wasn't full of coal and water, but it was actually uh, it carried uh, the, the actual kerosene fuel that it ran on. Now, the trouble with gas turbines is that they're not noted for their efficiency unless that you're actually running them constantly under load. Um, so uh, they were probably always destined to be a bit of a technological dead end in a railway application. They're much better for things like marine use, where you've got a ship that will be running at a constant speed day in, day out. Or an aeroplane, which for most of its time is, is running with that constant load. With a locomotive, you've got a lot of idling in stations. And it, it's, uh, I know a British Leyland, I think, also experimented with gas turbines for cars and uh, lorries. And they don't really work well in those sort of applications. So it was always really destined to be a bit of a, a dead end, especially as diesel engine technology moved on. Um, but it's a very interesting model nonetheless. And um, it, the prototype doesn't survive, there's a photograph there of it, um, but it is one that is always featured in the wish list poll. Now this model comes with full sound fitting. So we've got, uh, it's an ESU lock sound that's in here. 
and um, we've got some of the, the details of the functions. This is actually really useful. And what I do like as well is it gives you the, the CVs to change if you want to change the volume for the individual sounds as well, which is quite useful. And we've also got um, three different horns here. It seems we've got a whistle, alternative whistle, and a horn. So you can chop and change between those. Uh, all the sounds are on the decoder. You just have to set which one is being played out on that F2 key. Inside the box, uh, the locomotive itself is in what's a pretty standard uh, plastic clamshell packaging. I'm going to slide this out, and what I really want to show you is um, that we get not just the little detailing pack here, which has most of the things, some of the uh, buffer beam, uh, things like coupling detail, but you also get this lapel badge as well of the, the GT3. And this is a well-produced item there. It's a solid metal piece. And um, it'd be interesting, I, I'm, I hope that they actually sell these separately too, because I can see these being very, very popular. Um, and it's just a little bit of something that you can wear on, on like a jacket, that kind of thing. And um, I just, I like that touch. It shows utter pride in the model that they've produced, that they've also um, given you one of these to go with it. It's just nice little touches like that, that kind of raise a model up above and beyond. It just shows a complete pride in the making of the model and making everything perfect. And um, you know, little things like that do go a long way. I'm just going to get the model out here, uh, just remove the packaging on the top, and it has a very, very gloss finish. Now, between the tender and locomotive, we've got just a, it's a little piece of foam board there just to stop them rubbing in transit. And uh, here we have the locomotive and the, uh, the tender, and uh, it is a really nice model. I love this paint finish. It has that look of what paint on metal looks like. I'm not entirely sure how much of this is metal and how much is plastic. I know from the weight, you can feel that there is a lot of die cast components in there to make up that adhesive weight. But the paint finish, they've got absolutely right there. And the real locomotive was uh, turned out in this kind of beach brown uh, livery with green detailing on the chassis, uh, some of the vents as well, the grills at the front, and then lined out with the orange and um, like a silvery colour it looks there. And this actually earned it the nickname the Chocolate Zephyr by train spotters of the day. The other thing that I really love on this is the English Electric Vulcan Foundry logo there, done in exactly the same style as the British Railways late logo. And that's a really nice touch. Um, where you can see on here as I hold this tender up, some of this other detail. We've got the overhead warning flashes. We've got the uh, fuel gauges there for the amount of kerosene that was uh, in the tanks. And if I try and hold this nice and steady, you can see how much detail is there. The rivet detail on the underframe is pretty good. The SKF stamping on the uh, axle box journals on the end there. Really crisp detail on the springs, uh, the rest of the suspension. Uh, these ladders as well are separately applied. Um, apart from that little detailing pack, which is things like uh, three link couplings that you would put on the buffer beam if you weren't using the slimline tension lock couplings, um, everything else comes factory fitted. So we've got the brake gear underneath here too. Um, it uh, boasts uh, axle point pickups there on all the tender wheels. And these are really good because they, they don't run the risk of gumming up with muck uh, in the same way that things that run either on the treads or the backs of the wheels tend to. And they don't add any extra resistance, uh, which is also a little bit important as well. We can also see that tender plug. And it's got a similar kind of close coupling mechanism to what some of the coaching stock has. So it has a rather pleasing sprung loaded uh, center uh, finding mechanism there. And then we have 
that uh, end of the tender it's it's, it's peculiar because when they're put together it looks like a steam locomotive and tender but they're actually um not a, a conventional tender there's no full plate nothing like that there's just a, effectively a corridor collect connection you can see through the window some of the electronics in there the actual um speaker and the sound fitting is inside the tender you can see the speaker itself down through that mesh at the bottom that just lets the sound escape and I was really interested to hear the sound on this and uh, run it up on the DCC Concepts Rolling Road so I can get the full representation of the sounds. And it really is impressive when you think the prototype doesn't survive. The fact that they've got these gas turbine sounds really, really nicely done um, is something so different from anything else um, that's available on the market. Looking to the end there, we've got the buffers sprung loaded, uh, slimline tension lock coupling fitted as standard. You can change that out for KDs if that's the way you want to go. We've got the corridor connection on the end. I love this gloss paint finish. It really, it, it, it feels right. It's like an actual metal object, a solid metal object with the paint on. And some people have poo-pooed this, um, this suggestion when I reviewed the Hornby Duchess of Athol and talked about this. And um, I'm really, really um, of the opinion that uh, actually there is a difference when you paint plastic and when you paint metal. And what KR models have actually done here is whether it's metal or not under here, they've managed to replicate that particular look of painted metal. And I'm just going to put this down very carefully over here and I'm going to turn to the locomotive and as you can see 460 wheel arrangement it's very reminiscent of the styling of the spam cans the the bullied spam cans but it's not it's it's a very unconventional locomotive under that and but it's designed by those who have been very familiar with the steam era so it owes a lot to its layout to the more conventional locomotives of the day the cab itself is towards the back of the locomotive and you think actually if you're not restrained by having to shovel coal from the tender to the cab and things like that 
You would have thought logic would dictate that the cab should have been right at the front for better visibility, but they've gone down this route of a very conventional steam locomotive layout. The back of the cab, though, is not open to the elements, and uh, we've got the corresponding door for that uh, corridor connection there. And uh, apparently the cabs were very plush on this, as it cabs, the cab. And um, on the F19 function, uh, we've got cab lighting on this, which reveals a fully detailed cab interior. But it's really nice in there. They must have actually been quite a pleasant change to drive these compared to the steam locomotives of the day. You can imagine getting on the footplate of one of these and rather than being oily, dirty, breezy, uh, with the rain driving in through the gap, instead you're in a fully enclosed, probably heated cab uh, with plush carpet and uh, you sort of kick back with your slippers on. So they must have been very popular with the locomotive crews. They were also surprisingly reliable. When you compare to other prototype locos of the day, this locomotive was designed to be able to run up to 90 miles an hour with um, a transmission that was designed for ease of maintenance and reliability, and it really did manage that. If we look to the underside, again, all that brake rigging is factory finished. The chassis is finished in that body uh, chassis colour, the green, that uh, so much of the detailing was done on this. And we've got those very characteristic steam locomotive style wheels, but of course there's no cylinders. So one of the other benefits of this model would have been none of that hammer blow, which is when you get the power stroke, which is transmitted directly to the wheels, which kind of hammers the track. That wouldn't have been the case with these. The front bogey is centre sprung, just like the prototype would have been, which does mean that it glides through the track very, very uh, regally. We've got outside frames on that front bogey, and I'm just looking in there. I don't think there's any power pickup in there, but the spoking on that wheels is really nicely done. Front steps, factory fitted, and of course, because the bogey has full freedom of movement here behind, there's no cylinders, um, they can be factory fitted because they won't obstruct that front bogey on curves. The uh, front buffer beam has uh, fully sprung buffers again, and then all of this detail with the indicator flaps here is all factory fitted. And the grills too on the front, you can see right there into them, there's a lot of depth to this model and a lot of layers. I really like this, um, I'm guessing it would be a cooler group or the air intake and filter um, panel, but it's got uh, multiple layers on here with some very fine etched um, grills on there, I think it is. It's, it's a little bit difficult to see, but you can see there we get that three-dimensional sense. There is depth. It's not just a moulded piece. It's multiple layers. And again, on the roof, we've got multiple layers. And they are actually quite robust. There's a lot of etched metal components, more grills there. Again, more depth behind them. We've got, again, that really high gloss finish of a locomotive that is presented X works and it would have been buffed up within an inch of its life. English Electric were looking for um, orders for locomotives like these, so they wanted it always to look its best. We have etched nameplates, factory applied there with the GT3. And I do love these cab windows too. Again, you can see inside there, really great detail. Um, but the cab windows, flush glazed, no goldfish effect. Everything is really, really nice and such fine detail there on the uh, the actual glass and the uh, metal struts in between the different panes so really really nice we've got um, full metal handrails as well everything that could be metal is metal there's a lot of etch detail all factory fitted uh, this running board as well has like a checker plate finish on it and that feels again like it's a metal piece it doesn't have that kind of slight give that plastic gives you. That feels like there's a lot of metal going in here. And of course, as I said before, that gives it quite a lot of adhesive weight. When it comes to connecting the tender to the locomotive, you can see there we've got the pins on the tender and we've got the, um, the actual plug there on the locomotive. 
it's a case of very, very carefully make sure they are lined up. Once they are, then you can just wiggle them together and the tender and locomotive and they're connected and uh, it will run perfectly well. And that lovely close coupling mechanism does mean that uh, you actually get a very good prototypical gap between the pair but it doesn't preclude it from going around some quite tight curves. Now I had it running on the layout and I had it running with my rake of Intercity Mark I coaches and it did actually handle them reasonably well. These are all Backman Mark I's with a couple of Hornby Mark I's in there as well. It uh, managed to haul them round uh, all of Weir Yard. Uh, it, um, I had it running on the outermost track and there were a few places where I do have some gradients and you could see there's a little bit of wheel slip starting to creep in, but nothing major. I was actually quite impressed with the grip that this locomotive gave. Compared with some of the other manufacturers' steam outline locomotives, it uh, did perform pretty well. So overall, I'm quite pleased with the performance that you get from this model. I'm going to turn now to the scores and first up we've got build quality and actually this model when you consider it's been handled by pretty much every magazine out there I think I'm last in the queue to do the review on this and I'm really grateful to KR Models for sending it over and I'm just impressed how well it stood up to handling by so many different reviewers I mean, quite often you'll find with locomotives bits of detail fall off and there's no trace of that. There's nothing missing off this, nothing's fallen off, nothing's arrived in the box having come loose during all of that abuse and uh, probably a lot of unsympathetic handling. So I'm really impressed by that. There's a great weight to this locomotive and everything that's on it, even these very fine grills and uh, even the brake rigging detail as well. Nothing feels like it's fragile, but it looks perfect. So I'm gonna give this the full 10 out of 10. Really impressed with this. When it comes to running quality, there is a good deal of weight to this. That front bogey being centrally sprung, just like the uh, prototype, does mean that it goes through the corners with an immense amount of grace. However, it does struggle a little bit under a very long load. I did manage to get some wheel slip creeping in and uh, that was on some quite gentle gradients, albeit with quite a long train. I think for most people, you're never going to experience any kind of an issue with this. And certainly when running with a shorter train like Loco, it really did perform faultlessly. The setup of the DCC decoder as well is set up out of the box for really great speed responses. So you've got that wonderful acceleration curve and deceleration curve that really actually makes this a joy to watch going around the layout. So I'm going to give this a 9.1 out of 10. When it comes to innovation, I think it has to be applauded. This is really what you could consider quite an unusual prototype. It's one which, whilst it features highly in the wish lists, it may not be a locomotive that many people are massively familiar with. I must admit that the first time I saw a photograph of this, I had to do a double take to make sure that I was looking at a UK outline locomotive. The sound file on this uh, model and the sound chip really is sublime. I'm so impressed that they've been able to uh, get a viable sound there for the gas turbine locomotive, given that the prototype is long since gone. So on this score, I'm going to give this a 9.8. On accuracy of finish, again, it's no expense spared. It really does feel like a model that has been a labour of love, and that shows in the final product. There just isn't really anything to fault on this. So I've got no hesitation but to give it the full 10 out of 10. When it comes to value for money, again, this is a high quality model. 
And that oozes through everything from the really sturdy packaging to even having that lapel badge as well. There's just such a bunch of nice touches in there. It does feel like a quality package that has been presented with immense pride by KR Models. And I'm going to give this a 9.5 out of 10. And that gives us a full final score of a very respectable 48.4. And I'd like to thank again KR Models for sending this over for review. Well, a big, big thank you to KR Models for lending me the GT3 for review. And if you really liked what you saw today, we've got a link down below that takes you straight to the KR Models website where you can order one of these for yourself. Also, don't forget that the Jenny Monday Club Wagon, the exclusive wagon that we've commissioned through Acura Scale, is still available to order. And we've got a link for that down below as well. These are really limited in numbers and are sure to be collectible. So don't delay, order yours today. And until next time, tickle that like button and share this video too. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. And this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying you take great care of yourself and uh, happy modeling. Bye for now. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, oorail.co.uk, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Peter Bolton, Brian and Dorothy Mudd, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Andy Finch, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, MD of San Juan Model Company and Grantline Products, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYMR ish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Graham Foster and Clifford Ison. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.